everyone. Today I'm going to go over linked lists in C++. So a linked list is an abstract data type, or ADT, that is made up of nodes that are connected to each other by pointers. Unlike arrays, linked lists do not require continuous memory. The non-contiguous memory feature of linked lists is both a strength and a liability for your code. There are countless use cases for having linked lists in your code. For instance, an undo redo history tree could leverage linked lists to get past actions. Another example is in the code behind graphics APIs such as OpenGL and DirectX, which use per pixel linked lists for order independent transparency. I know, you're scratching your head right now, but we're at the tip of the iceberg here looking down. The truth of the matter is at this point in your CS education, you're probably learning a bunch of new abstract data types and working harder than necessary to contemplate realistic use cases for each of these new concepts. That being said, this video will go over an instance which you may very likely need to use a linked list. We'll start with every whiteboard interviewer's favorite challenge, reversing a linked list. So. You're on your third interview with a company, going for that 100K salary. You've nailed the first interview and the second. You've met your future coworkers. The finish line is just in sight. And then your interviewer pulls out the dreaded whiteboard. Write me a function to reverse the nodes of a linked list, they ask. So, without further ado, let's build this program. We'll start by setting up our basic C++ file. Here, let me zoom in a little for you. So before we build out our main driver, we are going to start by building out our first linked list node. And we'll do this with a struct. So we'll start by writing struct node. Now within this struct, there are two main data pieces. The first will be of type int called data. And the second will be a struct with a pointer to node that we'll call next. And now within this struct, we're going to define a node that takes in our data int. And then using the arrow operator, we'll make sure to set this data equal to data and the next to null. Now with our basic node set up, we'll write out our linked list struct. So to do this, we'll write struct linked list. And within this struct, we're going to set a pointer node to head and make sure that this head is pointing to null. And now within this struct, we'll also want to write our reverse function. Um, so to do this, we'll call a void function reverse. We'll set up another pointer to current and we'll set that equal to head. And we'll set up a pointer to previous set to null and next set to null. Now, within a while loop, we'll make sure that current is not equal to null, and we'll store next using the 
arrow operator again. And here's where we reverse the current node's pointer. Once again, you see that arrow operator, but this time it takes current to next and it sets that equal to previous. And now we'll want to move our pointers one position ahead. We do this by setting previous to current and current to next. Now outside of this while loop, we'll set head to previous. And that completes our reverse function. Now within this linked list struct, we're also going to want to build out a print function. And inside this print function, we'll set the node pointer. We'll call this temp for temporary and we'll set that equal to head another while loop that checks to see that temp is not equal to null and in the case that it isn't we'll set this to the data pointer put in a space for formatting and then we set temp equal to our next node. Lastly, within our struct, we'll want to declare, or we'll want to write a function of push that will take in an integer of data, node pointer temp equals new node, that's data, and then another temp to arrow operator to next, set that equal to head, and set head equal to temp. Lastly, We'll need a semicolon at the end of our push function, or at the end of our struct. And now, finally, we can build out the driver that will test uh, our above function. So we'll write int main return zero. And in here, we'll declare a new empty list and we'll call this my list and then we'll use our push function to push in whatever numbers uh, we want uh, this is just to illustrate uh, that our functions do in fact reverse the list so get uh, creative with the, the numbers you're putting in here And then we will output our original list to the user by calling our print function. And then we will call our reverse function and we'll output our reverse list to the user by calling our print function again after our reverse and now if everything is working correctly uh, we should be able to go into our command prompt and give this a compile Looks like everything compiled, 
and when we go to run it, what do you know? Looks like you've got the job. And that's it, folks. Your, your first lesson on linked lists. So the linked list main advantage is insertion speed. You can put any item into any position in the list simply by redirecting the pointers of the two nodes you want to insert the item between. So now I hope you can see why linked lists make up one of those fundamental core programming challenges that we all must rise to. Linked lists set the foundation for our grasp over working with the allocation of memory and handling pointers. Does this mean you'll be consistently using linked lists in your code? Probably not. But think of practicing stuff like this as an athletic drill, but for code, insofar as you may not use this strategy on game day, but by practicing the core concepts of linked lists, you're strengthening other co-requisite skill sets. So there you have it. That's how you build a linked list in C++. Thanks for watching.